Let's take a look at some of the problems we get with joins. This happens at any GIS software and QGIS is no exception. Sometimes strange things happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shapefile of local authority areas in the UK. And this is just a basic file with an area code, an area name and some other numbers in it. But we don't have any data here. The data we want to map is from a spreadsheet, here it is, of local labour market indicators. We have a column for the geography and we also have a column that's got the code in. Now the code here does match a code in the shapefile I've just added. So I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to close this and I'm going to drag and drop this Excel file into the main map canvas. That's how I'm adding this file. And when I do that, I get an option about which sheet within that file. So which sheet of the Excel file do I want to add? It's the LI01 sheet in this case. So I click on add layers. And if I open the table, we see this messy table because it had some header rows and we don't have the field names. It's got the field name somewhere else. It's a bit of a mess, but I can see that in field two, that's where the area codes are. So let's just try a join on this basic table. So it's field two. So I'll double click on the LED layer on the left. In layer properties, I'm going to go to joins. I'll click the green plus and I want to join field two to the target field in the shape file, which was the, the one ending CD because that's got the area codes. I always tick this box because otherwise this text gets added to the header of the new table for all the new rows. So I'll delete that. I'll click OK and then I'll click OK again. Now to double check the joins worked, all the data is there, I can just open the table for this layer. And now I see instead of just having a few columns, it's got all the data. What I usually do once I've done this is I sort by value. So I'll just click where it says field three and I'll click again. So I can see where all the nulls are. Now the nulls here are all in Northern Ireland. And I know this anyway, but I can tell this because the area codes for the Northern Ireland local authorities all start with N. So that's because we don't have any data for local authorities in Northern Ireland. So I can deselect these. But notice one more thing, if I sort field three again, it's sorting not by value, but like it's a, like it's a text field. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is I'm just gonna right click this and go to export. And I'm gonna save this to a new file. So save features as, I'm gonna save it to a geo package you can choose any format you like. File name, I just click on this little button, uh, browse button, and I'll navigate to somewhere I want to save it to. So I've navigated, navigated to my bad join folder, which I created before. So I'll call this one, uh, let me just call this one LM IEG table Jan 2024 because it's a geo package, I usually copy that little bit of text, click on save, and then I add that to the layer name here. It doesn't matter if you don't, it's just neater if you do that. Hold on a second. I like to put this text just to reiterate as the layer name as well. So then we get a clean layer name. And if I click okay, it's gonna add that to the map. So I can turn off the previous one. Now, if I open up the table, yeah, it's nice and neat. We do have this thing where it's called field one, field two, and so on. It's not descriptive. It's not taking the field names from here, but that's because we had this messy situation here and these are all quite long and it's not ideal, but we can tell what they are. We know what field we want to map. It's going to be, in this case, uh, it could be any of the fields, but I think the one we're probably going to map would be, in this case, field three, for example. But the problem we've got is when we sort it, 
it sorts from one to nine as if it's a text. We've also got the null data for Northern Ireland. Um, we don't have a we don't have a a, a a field, sorry, telling us it's in, in Northern Ireland. But I want to remove this because we don't have any data. So one way we can do that quite easily is I right click on the layer and go to filter. I can click not, and then this field has the area code. So I'll double click that. I'll hit like, and then I'm going to put in a single quote, an N, and then a percent and a single quote. What this does is it displays everywhere where there is no N something in the area code. If I click test, Northern Ireland disappears. Sorry about that, but there's no data. Click OK and click OK. So that's better. But now if I go and try and map in symbology for the new layer, and I go to something like graduated, I want to map a value, but I, I only see these values. I don't see all the other values I added. And that's because if I go to fields, we see that they are all strings. So QGIS reads this as text. Okay, so that's not great. Now at this stage, if you've done your join and you've exported your new layer, you probably don't want to do it all again. So there's a number of things you can do. If you want to convert one, you'll have to create a new variable in the table. So here's one way to do it. If I go to the table for the new layer, I go to the calculator, and then I'm gonna call the output field name. I'll just call it population. Let me just double check which field that would be. Okay, so that would be, this field should be field three, population 16 to 64 it is. That's fine, I'll move that out of the way. So I'll just call this one, in fact, pop1664. It's gonna be an integer, so it's a whole number. And if I go to fields and values in the middle section, that was field three. So I'll double click it. Now, it's gonna add the value from field three. It's gonna put it in a new column called pop 1664, but it's not gonna be text, it's gonna be an integer. So if I click okay, and then scroll all the way to the right, we see the numbers, great. We also notice that when you do that, edit mode is turned on. So I need to click this to turn edit mode off and then hit save. Now, if I sort this now, it, you see it will go from lowest value to highest value because it's now numeric. And if I go back into the properties for this layer and go to symbology and then graduated and then hit the value drop down, now we see that variable because it's now not a string, it's an integer. So it can be mapped. And when you click on the value drop down, you do see a little indication before the variable. One, two, three would mean it's an integer. And when it's got a decimal place in it, like Latin long, it's a decimal number. Okay, so we could do that, but what I would really like to do when I'm joining data is I don't like to do a messy join in the first place. So here's what I would usually do. Before I do it, I'll turn this layer off, I'll turn the original one on, and I'll double click on it, and I'll go to joins. I'm just gonna select that join and hit minus. So I've just removed the join from the original layer. I'll click okay. Here's what I would usually do. If I've got a data set like this, I'll just select all the data in it. Okay, so selecting all the data. You can see at the bottom of this, there is a, a row for Northern Ireland, but not individual local authorities. So I'm not gonna copy that there. I'm going to select all the data, but I'm not, I'm not including the top rows, that's just information. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it into a new sheet like this. And I'm just going to, well, the headers are quite long, but I can just leave them as they are. Actually, when I look at the headers, we've got population here, employment, employment rate. We don't seem to have everything that was in the headers here. We've got geography, code, population. That should, that should say population 16 to 64. Uh, not quite sure why that's the case, but just be careful before you save things that you've got everything you need. But in this case, this is fine. 
I'm just demonstrating the method, but you can change the header names here. You can also do it in QGIS. But so I've got that, and now I'm gonna save this as a CSV. I'm gonna file, save as, and I'll save this as a CSV. And what we'll call this one, LM Reg Table Jan 2024. So this is going to be a CSV and I'm hitting save and I'm closing this and the original one. And instead of dragging and dropping this in, I'm going to click on the open data source manager button. I'm going to go to the delimited text and I'll click the browse button in the file name section. And there's my CSV. So I'll click open. Now, the reason I do this is something I'll show you in a second. It's got no geometry in it. So that's the only thing I'm going to change up here. The file format, same. Records and fields options. Okay, fine. No geometry because there's no geography attached to this. Now, the important thing is, let me expand this a little bit. When you import a CSV this way, you have the option to specify the data type. As you do this, QGIS usually recognizes the format of the number. Now in the first one, it does say integer, but the next one, it thinks it's a string. So we'll change that to integer. The next one thinks it's text. So we'll change that to decimal because you can see it's a decimal. So we do get the opportunity to change these texts to integers. Integer 32 bit is fine. The reason sometimes you have to do this is because when you download data, sometimes it might have like a, a footnote or a piece of text in one of the cells and your GIS software, QGIS included, can interpret that as text and just change everything to text. And then that messes up your ability to map. So let me just have a look at this. We want to make sure everything's correct. Uh, this is gonna be decimal, 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 integer, decimal. Okay, that looks okay. I'll click add and then close. So the table's there. If I open up the original table one more time, if I scroll down through the data set, we can see there are some highlighted cells. Maybe this caused it to mess it up. I'm not sure exactly what the cause is of, in this case, it being interpreted as string ah there we go look here's some examples in square brackets there's an x there's an x there's a c and the c and this can make the whole column when you import it into qgis flip to string and that's not what we want here all right so we've got the table let's open it up this is a csv i just made all right okay so the headers are here actually so that, that looks fine that's good and if we sort it by population yeah, that looks fine. Now we can do the join on the original layer. Click plus, uh, geography, join field is gonna be geography code. The target field is this one, which has the code in it. And the custom field name prefix, again, we don't want that included in the header of the new column. So I'll delete this and click okay. And okay, now just to reiterate, when I'm doing a join, I typically do this. I clean the data up first, then add it to QGIS then join it <clears throat> so double click the newly joined layer if i go to fields we can see that these field types are all correct geography is a string population is an integer integer decimal and so on so that's good that means if i double click on the layer again and go to symbology when i go to the graduated section and go to the value field which is good i can map all these things employment age, all these things. It's got the full header in, which is nice. So let's just do employment rate. Let's choose a color. That'll do, classify it and click okay. Often with this, uh, I will double click the layer. I'll go to the symbol section. I'll click on the drop down. I'll configure the symbol. And if I go to simple fill, I'll usually see the strokes width is 0.0. Two six. I think that's too much. So I'll make it 0 0.1 and I'll give it a white outline. Usually that looks cleaner. Hopefully you see what I mean. Okay, so the last thing I'll do, once I've done the join, it's all clean, it all works. I'll right click the layer where the join is. I'll export it. I'll go to save features as, 
and I'm gonna save it as a geo package in my folder. I'll save it with a new name, V2. So that's version two, the one that is correct. Copy the file name, paste it into the layer name box. Again, this is just so it looks clean in the layers panel. I'll click OK. And then we have it added to map. If I quickly want to copy and paste a style from one to the other, I can right click, copy the style from that layer, right click the new layer and styles. I'll paste style. Okay, so that's my workflow. When you do a join, sometimes the data, the numeric data is imported and it will be a string and you won't be able to map it and it's very frustrating. You can fix it the first way I showed by creating a new column, but if you've got lots of columns that are string that you want to be numeric, this is quite tedious. The best way is to make sure your data is clean before you add it to QGIS. And then once you've done that, everything should work. If something isn't working and it's just not mapping, you can go into the layer properties and go to fields. And if any of the things you're trying to map say string, then if they are actually numbers, that's not what you want. Okay, so let me cancel that. And if we zoom in here, we can see the data. And then from there, we can do whatever we like, just as normal. Let's just change the color ramp to I think this one I created before, blues. There we go. Don't like that. Let's change it back to that. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully that's going to save you a bit of pain. That's usually what I do when I do a join. Joins can go wrong all the time. Sometimes it's because of weird things in the underlying data. But once you've been through this, you should no longer have this problem.